All right, this video is going over the last few pages of that study guide to get you ready for your test tomorrow. Some of you did this page with me, but some of you were not able to get to me, so I wanted to make sure I put it on the video. Numbers 9 and 10, we're looking at adding and subtracting decimals. Now, you can see that we have models here. You don't have to use the models, but you can if you want. It's a great way for you to check over. We're going to do 1 and 17 hundredths plus 2 and 45 hundredths. If you would like to set it up like normal with the standard algorithm, remembering to line up your decimal straight and true, you can do that. You know that 5 plus 7 equals 12, carry the 1, 4 plus 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6, bring down that decimal, 2 plus 1 is 3. You see that the answer is 3 and 62 hundredths. If you want to use the models to check, here's what I recommend that you do. Put all of your whole numbers in first, so color in one hole and color in those two holes. Go to your tenths next. We have one tenth and four tenths and your hundredths. That's seven hundredths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and five hundredths. One, two, three. I made a ten, four, five. Excuse me, a tenth. So now we can see that we have one, two, three holes. We have one, two, three, four, five, six tenths and two hundredths. Either way, we get the answer 3 and 62 hundredths. That's how you solve it using the algorithm and models. Moving on to number 10. Number 10 is a subtraction problem. You can do it standard algorithm if you would like. Remember to line up those decimals straight and true. 8 minus 8 is 0. 5 minus 2 is 3. Bring down that decimal. 3 minus 1 is 2. So your answer is 2 and 30 hundredths. Or you can use the model. Now, in this model, you see that we have one, two, three holes, one, two, three, four, five tenths, and two, four, six, eight hundredths. So that's showing us three and fifty-eight hundredths. We need to take away one hole, two tenths, and eight hundredths. So I'm going to take away one hole, I'm going to take away two tenths, and I'm going to take all eight of those hundredths away. And what we're left with is two holes, one, two, three tenths. So two and three tenths, or two and thirty hundredths, because we don't have any hundredths left. So there's a zero in the hundredths place. So you need to be able to add and subtract decimals for your test. Moving on to number 11. Okay, Justin has three containers. Container A holds two and sixty-eight hundredths liters. Container B holds two and sixty-eight thousandths liters. And container C holds two and seven tenths liters. Justin says that container B holds the greatest amount because two and sixty-eight thousandths has the most digits. Do you agree or disagree? Explain your reasoning using pictures, words, and or symbols. Because it says and or, I'm going to use my symbols to begin with. So container A holds two holes and 68 hundredths. Container B holds two holes and 68 thousandths. And container C holds two holes and seven tenths. If we are comparing these decimals, we're trying to figure out what holds the most, so you know that we need to add those zeros. When I add those zeros, I can take those two holes out because they're all the same. I see that I have 680 thousandths, 68 thousandths, and 700 thousandths. I know that 700 thousandths is bigger than 680 thousandths or 68, so that must mean that this is my biggest number, two and seven tenths. Even though it has the least amount of digits, because it has a 7 in the tenths place, the 7 is larger than the 0 or the 6. So that is the biggest number. Digits don't matter. Value matters. All right, moving on to number 12. We want to change that to say 12 and 17 hundredths. We're going to round it to the nearest tenths position, and we're going to use the number line um, and words to explain our thinking. I have 12 and 1 tenth, 12 and 2 tenths. I'm rounding it to the nearest tenth. Which tenth will I round to? I can see in the middle I have 12 and 15 hundredths. I need to put 12 and 17 hundredths, so that's 15, 16, 17. So there's where my decimal is. It is closer, my pen is dying, it is closer to 12 and 2 tenths than it is 12 and 1 tenth. So 12 and 17 hundredths rounded to the nearest tenth is 12 and 2 tenths because 17 hundredths is closer to 2 tenths or 20 hundredths 
than one tenth or ten hundredths. Okay. All right, so that's number 12. Let's move on to that back page for us. Number 13. Miss Roundtree wrote the number 178 and 200 on a sheet of paper. She wrote the number 178 and 20 hundredths on another sheet of paper. Fill in the blanks below to show how Miss Roundtree changed the digits and the value of the number. Before I look here, I'm going to try to figure out what I see. So I see 178 and 2 hundredths, and I see 178 and 20 hundredths. Well, what's the difference? The difference is this number has 2 hundredths, and this number has 10, 20 hundredths. Excuse me. The difference between those two numbers is a times 10, right? In order to get my 2 from the hundredths place to the tenths place, I need to do one hop. That's a times 10 hop. So let's see what it says. Mrs. Roundtree changed the digits by exchanging the blank in the blank place with the blank in the blank place. Well, that's a little confusing. Mrs. Roundtree changed the digits by exchanging the two, right? Because we're talking about the two. The two was in the hundredths place. With the two, right? And this two is in the tenths place. As a result, the value, well, let's see, did it go up or down? It went from two hundredths to two tenths. That is an increase. That's from two cents to 20 cents. And it increased by one hop. So it increased by 10. Mrs. Roundtree exchanged the digit the two in the hundredths place with the two in the tenths place. As a result, the value increased by 10. She went from hundredths to tenths. It got bigger. All right, number 14. Lucy uses place value models or the algorithm to find this sum. Show how Lucy may have found the sum. Because it says or algorithm, I'm going to use the algorithm. When you add decimals, this is what you do. Line up your decimals straight and true. If you see a blank space, put a zero in. Add them up from right to left, and now you've reached the end. 5 plus 8 is 13. 6, 7, 8. Bring down your decimal. 4, 5, 6. So our answer is 6 holes and 83 hundredths. That wasn't too bad. Let's look at number 15. Emily is playing a decimal card game. She wants her numbers to add up to three. She has three cards in her hand. Emily's cards are shown below. Boom, boom, boom. She's missing a card. We want to get a sum of three. What should this card's value be? I want to get to three. Well, what am I at? Let's see. Let's add one and two tenths plus 35 hundredths plus one whole. Put our decimal our placeholder zeros in. Light them up by the decimals. Five. Five, two. So right now she's at two holes and 55 hundredths. She wants to get to three holes. So here's what she wants. We're going to take away what she has in order to find what she needs. Add those zeros in. That becomes a two. A ten. Regroup it to a nine. Ten minus five is five. Nine minus five is four. Two minus two is zero. So the last card needs to be 45 hundredths in order for it all to add up to three holes. This was a two-step problem. We had to figure out what she had in order to figure out what she needs. All right, almost there. The last page. Kelly's completing a number riddle. She is given the clues. The number has four digits. One, two, three, four. The number rounded to the nearest tenth is 46 and seven tenths. We need to know the least number that matches these clues and the greatest number that matches these clues. So we need to know what's going to round to 46 and 7 tenths. So we know that this is going to be a 46 and what we need to figure out is our tenths and our hundredths place in order for it to round to a 7. The least number that matches these clues, the smallest number that can match these clues, is going to mean that it's going to round up. So in that case, it's got to have a 6 in the tenths place, and it's got to round up. So it's the smallest number that rounds up. Five or more raise the score. So the smallest number that will still round up is going to be that 5. 46 and 65 tenths, hundredths is going to round up to 46 and 7 tenths. 
What's the greatest number that matches these clues? Well, we still need those 46 holes. In this case, we need to have that seven in there. Now we're rounding down. What is the biggest number that will still round down to seven tenths? Five or more, add one more, so it can't be a five, so it must be a four. The smallest number that will round up to 46 and 7 tenths, the biggest number will round down to 46 and 7 tenths. That was a bonus question, so that took a lot of thinking. All right, almost there. Number 17, a chocolate bar is 5 tenths meters long. A piece of candy corn is 5 thousandths meters long. How many times greater is the length of the chocolate bar than the length of the candy corn? So we're going from 5 tenths, and we've got 5 thousandths. So I'm going from the thousandths place to the tenths place. That's 1, 2. That's 2 hops. 2 hops is 2 zeros. We put a 1 on front of it. So how many times greater is it? It is 100 times greater. The candy corn, or excuse me, the chocolate bar is 100 times greater than the candy corn. Last one, number 18, Miss Ross measures the side of her garden. It was 206 thousandths of a meter long. What is the length of the side of the garden in standard form and expanded form? 206 thousandths. 200. And is my decimal. Six in the thousandths place. That means I don't have tenths, I don't have hundredths, but I have a thousandths. 206 thousandths. In expanded form, I only have two digits. So I'm going to write two times its value of 100 plus the 6 times its value of 1 over 1,000. There you go. That is the end of your study guide. I hope you have watched this video and you are ready for your test tomorrow. Remember, your test looks a lot like this study guide, so if you can do the problems on the study guide, you can do the problems on your test. See you tomorrow.